Um, all right, so marketing is, um, they, they're a functional department, okay? So they have multiple, uh, we, we need to do stuff for our internal team, we need to do stuff for our external customers. They break up those responsibilities by people, and if it becomes big enough, they might assign somebody to a channel. So it, the answer is sometimes you do, the, the more you scale, you'll have functional departments in various sections of your company. A good example, if you ever sell to Costco, we'll assume that you have a, a guy selling to Costco, right? He's a sales agent, he sells to Costco. And Mike can help me on this, he's got a lot of experience with the stats business especially. Um, they require you to have a customer service person dedicated to Costco, right? So you you have to have a dedicated person to them. Now, Costco's not gonna come in and watch what they do all day, right? So as long as you have the resource to, to fulfill that requirement, you'll be okay. But your service department will have everybody else and a Costco guy on your org chart. Or maybe at some point you need a Walmart guy too, right? And all the thing, all the companies you deal with, if you start thinking like this, uh, Gene, you have an Amazon rep, right? So somewhere in Amazon's service department, they have a small, medium-sized business designation or whatever, and a whatever tier one support team, right? And so you just think logically how those people are fitting in. That's how they rationalize it in their service organization. So does that help answer it, Stefan? A bit, not a bit. No, I'm asking because now I have, uh, I hired, like about two weeks ago, two different marketing teams. One that's gonna focus on uh, Shopify growth, and one that's gonna focus on uh, uh, Amazon ranking. Okay. Okay, but, and then I have an assistant, but she's not handling the show. My assistant, she's running Amazon. US and Europe. Let's work this one down, because I think this is relevant to everybody. And Mike, don't hesitate to jump in. You've managed channels and stuff. So my initial thoughts are, at, at some point, there's going to be a position probably called marketing channel manager, right? And, and then it's me now. Yeah, you'll yeah, fill yeah, that box. Right. Right. You get the hang of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're well in the probably. And you just said Shopify. I'm sorry, what was the name of the, the manager? Just a channel manager. Channel manager. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, Shopify was one, and what was the other? Uh, Amazon. Amazon. Yeah. Okay. Amazon uh, US actually because Amazon Europe. Sure. Doesn't have anybody yet. Okay. Amazon. No, actually no because uh, I just, I don't have time for it yet. Hey, who else can think of another channel manager we put in there? eBay. Like uh, eBay, Walmart, Walmart, Walmart and Z, and, uh, no. retail. Yeah. Now, so, what, once it gets down to Jet, Sears, kind of all the little guys who are not really a full-time job and may never be, you just go, other, all right? And so, and, and maybe the channel manager takes on some of those or whatever, but you should have named accounts, you know, probably in this, in this scenario. You say, hey, Shopify, this is the department that handles that. Now, it could be one person, it could ultimately be, you know, uh, Chris has got a big Shopify site. How many? What's your scenario look like for managing your Shopify, Chris? Yeah. Well, there's the marketing team. Uh, yeah. That's interesting. Well, we have one person, a team that's in charge of the listings uh, and the ad creation. One that's in charge of you know photography, sure, sure. and then the marketing team. Yeah. So we have a three teams that are kind of all co-working. Yeah, so there's different responsibilities. Yeah, there's exactly that's the point. It's a, it's a different set of responsibilities. So if you have, let's just say for the sake of discussion, you have a photography, do I have a photography? No, I don't have one, but you've got somebody who generates your photos, right? How do you do photos, Mike? You have a photography manager? Uh, it's a part of new products. So I've got a photography team, but they're all under one manager along with the data generators. Okay, so I'm gonna put Mike on the spot. Would you show us your, anybody want to see what his yes. photography team or yeah. your content team, will you share that with us? Sure. Yeah. You don't have to, but. Oh, well, so, so you want to, uh, so all just the whole product? product yeah, new product, right? All you guys need new product teams, right? Let's see how one works. Okay, so maybe, I'll, I'll, let me do mine and maybe I'll wait to you. Okay, yeah, well, um, all right, so. So we've got new products. This is me. This is the company. Um, then we've got uh, 
departments. So I've got one photographer that does product, and we have a whole separate thing we call alt views. Um, so we we write uh, style guides, and if you want to buy a a hinge, doesn't sound very complicated, right? It's just a, a hinge. But we have a style guide that says at what angle you're going to photograph that hinge. Because we've just through a lot of math, we've discovered that more pictures of hinges sells better. Sell more hinges. Um, so I've got product photography, and then I've got alt views. We're having to go back through the catalog over the years of all the products we've added and pick up stuff and re-photograph them in these multiple views. So she's trying to inbound a whole bunch of products first time in. This person's going back and adding more photos, five, six photos per item. Then I've got, uh, uh, well, I, I'm gonna, I've got Albert, who's just kind of a genius. Um, and then I've got uh, two data generators. So this is uh, spreadsheets. Uh, loaded. We use an operating system called NetSuite. So that's, that's what's it like? Uh, it, it's, it's our accounting, it's our inventory, it's our everything. In fact, it spins up our websites as well. Um, and so you gotta load all of this stuff into the system. And I've got three people there. What is that content? Data generation. What does that mean? Um, skews, weights, dimensions, um, um, all, all that stuff. Who the vendor is, what the price is. Yeah, yeah. And just to add context, that's in a, a drop shipping setting primarily. So they're working with distributors or manufacturers or whatever. Yeah, maybe th th round numbers think half drop ship, half uh, stuff that we're inventorying. There you go. Um, uh, then I've got a, a copywriter. Uh, we, um, lighting industry is an easy example. In lighting, you get the, the, all of the lighting manufacturers will give you a spreadsheet in a standardized format, which is really cool, right? except now you've all got exactly the same information and the same product description, so there's nothing unique about you. So we go in and we rewrite uh, descriptions on everything. So we have our own original descriptions uh, in there. Um, Albert is somebody that um, has been with the company. We've been in business 17 years. Albert's been there about 16 years. Uh, so he knows sort of everything. And he works as a traffic cop, uh, 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 domain expertise on what he's got. Um, and some special projects, uh, along with a lot of curation. He'll say, we don't want that, that's not good enough, or uh, if that's what you want, I know who to go to to get it. So I've got photography, data generators, copywriting, and then this sort of domain expertise that reports to Bob, who reports to me, and we go up. That's completely, so kind of got that in your head? Okay. Um, what's interesting is, in this whole thing, um, there's no vendor relations, right? So they're all doing all this work, but they're not striking a deal with the manufacturer on the dropship case. They're not striking a deal with them. They're not negotiating contracts. Um, if they get a price increase, that comes into somebody else who passes it over, and the data generators will load a new price increase. NetSuite is brutal for uh, merchandising, because we're, you know, we're not using Magento like you did, right? So we've got this native, that, you know, uh, when we load a product, it goes to the bottom of the queue. So on chandeliers, I've got 15 pages, uh, I'm sorry, I think I've got 27 pages of chandeliers, 30 items a page. The next one I put on is going to be at the top of page 28, okay? <laughs> the new one that I just put on is going to be at the very bottom of my, my thing. And I don't have anybody doing merchandising, and it's somebody I want to get next year. Now, this is really different than, than ATG. Uh, Mike, let me just ask a question before we go further. So, uh, who is talking to vendors and negotiating? Is there another department handling it or is it just not happening? So, in some ways, we're a small company, like, not unlike you guys. So, when we go to Dallas, I go because I have relationships sure. and I can do things. Uh, Roy goes because he knows people. But then we've got a purchasing supply chain relationship. And we usually grab Claire and, and she goes. And she's kind of the, kid, the uh, record keeper, right? She's got the notes on the visits. She's got the old contract. She's got the things we asked for last time that they didn't give us that we want this time. And who does the sourcing of the new products from that you're going to stock? 
from uh, India or wherever you Albert knows some of those guys. Sometimes we give it to Bob and tell him. We want to do barn door hardware, right? These, these big sliding things. It's kind of fad, but it also kind of fits into our niche. Uh, so we said, Bob, you gotta find some barn door guys for us. So he starts kind of looking around and seeing what's going on. We make him go to some trade shows like Kitchen and Bath uh, and a couple of others. Go find some new vendors. Uh, okay, so but them. most of it happens in that department. Yeah. Product. Okay. Yeah, but then they have to pass it over to Claire, and then they then yeah. it comes back to them if it's all clear. Okay. All right. Uh, go ahead. Show us uh, ATG. So ATG was was kind of different. We had uh, Biz Dev over here. Um, this is those new uh, Dub grads that just were straight out of school, right? And they're out, and they're out, they're uh, dialing for dollars, right? They are cold calling manufacturers. Hey, we want to put every single thing you've got on our website today. Um, can we have your spreadsheet? Can we have your FTP credentials so we can download your images and off we go? We had no photographers at ATG whatsoever. Okay, I had a guy in marketing that would do something for me, but um, mostly he was supposed to be making videos, and that's another story. Um, but we had no photographers. So if you didn't have product photography, we did not put you on the site. Um, so BizDev goes out, strikes the deal, give us the stuff. They pass it over to content, and content was split by and this is important on all org charts. We were split. We had a lighting team, a hardware team, um, a uh, um, sports and uh, auto parts and something else, um, a plumbing team, right? And each one of those then was split with a lead, somebody that had been there for a while, knew what they were doing, um, and then several others. And then they had to pass over to, um, all of this would come back over, and there'd be a QC person over here because we hated making mistakes. And so they would come back and, and, and check all of it. Essentially, they had to almost do the job a second time. They had to, you had to give them the raw spreadsheets, and then we would look at everything in our system, and they would do this matchup um, on what was going on because we had to get it uh, right. Um, uh, we did, but... Uh, product descriptions, all that kind of stuff was was loaded uh, with the spreadsheets. Um, again, we didn't, we hardly wrote any of those. I don't know that we did. Once in a while, maybe some of the biz dev guys would do something so that they could get their line through because they were measured on how many products they got loaded. So yeah. the easier they made it for content to get them loaded, the better off. So uh, obviously these two, more or less both of these are kind of new product departments and they're pretty much different. I mean, uh, is that fair to say? I yeah. Mean, yeah. So very different. Uh, but the the party mentioned about category management. I hope everybody caught that, right? So um, we talked about this on the first day a little bit. That you know, if you're going to have um, a big business, and even one of the brokers or somebody mentioned, if you're going to have, you know, at your top line, it can't just say revenue. I mean, it can have the roll up, but it should say you know, category one, category two, category three. Now, if you only have one category, that's fine, but break it into subcategories. Um, you know, Chris, do you mind if I use your, your business? Sure. Uh, so if you've, if you've got category management, and you may already have this, actually, do you have different category managers for? For, yeah, for different, like one for different parts, like belly rings. Yeah, so you got a belly ring category belly, manager, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. each one is. It's a full catalog of, yeah, so. For how many people have belly ring catalog manager on there? <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, so all right, the, the point is that when you dive it down deep, it can look different but accomplish the same goal and it depends on the organization. So I think that's good for that. Let's come back to the top line functionals. Okay. I think for the moment. Is everybody clear on what Mike Michael talked about? Yeah. Okay. Tell me, I mean over for a second. No. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm a marketing guy. Every picture tells a story. And you could build an org chart based on skills or on uh, accounts, or you might need to put a firewall in between, you know, like a newspaper does, right, between advertising and uh, editorial. Um, and you might have to have, you know, almost some duplicate structure on some stuff because you want that firewall there. Um, there's, there is, we're, we're not, we're, we're, we're archaeologists here. We're trying to dig out how does our company really work and what's a smart way to organize it. Not um, what's the what's open the book and do the org chart. I mean, the last thing you should do is take this and fill in the blanks and call it yours. Okay, you're going to have to build your own. Okay, because okay? yours might be really really different. You might say, you know, um, we've got big boxes and we've got boutiques, right? And or, or I've got online expertise and I need that to be one cohesive team that really knows. And then in my culture, we fight. 
let's say, right? So I want the guys that are out doing, um, trying to land the Costco's and the Walmarts and stuff, I want them going out selling their guts out, and I want the e-commerce guys selling their guts out, and the winner gets 100 bucks, right? And I'm gonna, they're gonna give them separate structures so they can do everything and not fight over resources. They can just fight over the prize at the end of the day. I don't like those cultures, but there's lots of people that set those up because that's who they are and how they want to do things. So you got to archaeology, find who it is, your, what works for you. Absolutely right. So that, that's probably the best point possibly to be made. If you guys take this home, write it down, and think that's drawn, you know, your, your way, that's a mistake. That's a big mistake. That said, I think we are going to talk about some functional departments. We started down this road, and I sidetracked this. So I'm going to write it down the side just to give us more room. So you always start, you know, at the top of the, the thing, and the president is going to have, you know, these departments reporting in. And we'll start off with, I heard operations, so I'm going to write in operations. There's no wrong answer, by the way. And definitions of what these mean later are relevant, but uh, we'll start with operations. Who's got another functional department they think is relevant? Customer service. There you go. Customer service. Give me another one. Marketing. Marketing? Not relevant. Of course, marketing. Product development. Uh, product development? If you were, um, uh, what's that company with the Rubbermaid? You know, you would maybe have its own separate product development, but a lot of guys will have a product development that folds into another place. But it absolutely has to be on here. <laughs> oh, there's the heroes. <laughs> Did anybody forget they ordered coffee? So you said, you said okay, that give me another one. Finance. Finance, oh, thank you. I'm going to have to actually account for some of this stuff. Give me another one. Tech. Tech. No need. Everybody. Anybody else? HR. HR, sure. So if you're trying to do the ideal one or like the meat required. What are we trying to do? So what, what we're trying to do is say, what does our company look like? We're going to use Marcos. He wants to do 50 million in five years. What does your company look like in five years? What right. functional departments do you need if you want to do 50 million dollars? I'm sorry I didn't fully close that loop, but um, everybody's different, so we're going to pick out Marcos. Is that all right? I'm halfway asleep. Now. But so you think <laughs> he won't ever know. <laughs> He's okay with two million. Um, functional. What about uh, a regional functional manager? Uh, like a regional manager? And what would their what would they manage? So, for example, you've got Europe, Asia. Okay, sure. So, so that's managing the you know the, the local so specific, specific local a geographic specific. kind of basis. Yeah, the tax. Uh, yeah. You know. Yeah. So sometimes that that might look like you know if your company's really big, it might be U.S. that starts here, and then you got all that in the U.S. and you might have some of that in the EU, and you might have some of that in Asia. Right? Because ultimately, each of those are their own organization. You may share some resources. You know, there might, finance might be one global department, right? But then you have sales and marketing in each individual geographic region. Sure. Growth opportunity, when you put it under operation. Well, business development is a common so, slang. It's synonymous for... So biz dev can be in almost any uh, yeah. uh, business development can be in sales departments, it can be in just guys in the room scheming, making everybody schemes, you know, more geographies, more products, more whatever. Um, those can sometimes slot in under marketing, those can slot in under sales. Uh, some guys, I haven't heard sales department yet, but uh, it can be under marketing, but I'll tell you, there's a lot of companies that, and, and again, Less so e-commerce wise, but there's a lot of companies that may need a sales department. And in your case, and I'm going to use Marcos. <coughs> Marcos, do you want to sell into big box someday or yeah. retail or whatever? So you're going to have to have a sales department of some kind. Sending those guys emails is not going to win the day, right? And uh, so that sales department, whether it's managed by a guy internally or you decide to use an agency or multiple agencies, 
you have a sales team out there, and the sales team will go, hey, I need one page flyer. So who helped, who, who is, was playing on the CBS uh, proposal with me? Yeah, a few of us. So uh, a, a quick story, CBS, uh, I think I was in China, and they emailed us and said, we're looking for something, and I don't even remember the details, and I'm like, hey, we're all here in Evo, you guys want to find something? You know, uh, we'll, we'll throw it out to them. If anything sticks, we'll split the, split the ante. Uh, and we're still waiting to hear back. We did get five through the first phase. We'll see if it goes any farther. Uh, but the sales guy was like, hey, I need all the one pages. I need all the details. I need all the, the good stuff about this. And we're like, hey, we just <laughs> we just got a sample off a guy, you know, in Iwo three days ago. We got none of that, right? So sales expects marketing to produce materials that they want. And that's that's their job. They're, the marketing customer, in that case, is the sales team. Their deliverable is to the sales team, right? Is that fair to say, Mike? Yeah. Uh, well, and marketing's in charge of branding, right? Also branding. They're, they're, sales is day-to-day, -day, marketing's long-term. Long -term. Exactly right. So there are some guys who will put in a VP of sales and marketing, and you'll have a director of marketing here and a director of sales down here, and they're trying to keep those two from killing each other. Sales will always say, those sons of bitches in marketing are giving us terrible leads, right? Right. If you ever see Glenn Garrigan and Ross, right? They want the good leads. And of course, everybody in marketing goes, those guys can't sell with a damn. We are sending pure gold and they suck, right? And that's that dynamic tension you have to manage. So understanding that, you know, sometimes it helps to have one guy who's got to be the um, judge, essentially, and the kind of facilitator, as opposed to bringing that all the way up. But many organizations would have sales and marketing separate as well. Any other functional departments you guys can think of? Traffic conversion. Traffic conversion. Yeah, I think most of that is going to be under marketing. Because that's a very important thing. It has to happen, but it's going to be managerially in the marketing setting. Is that how you do it, Mike? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Legal. 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 Sure, sure. Uh, a lot of times that'll be managed by finance, but if you are a certain kind of company, I don't think it applies to e-commerce, but the biotech guy, guarantee you, president, lawyer, right? <laughs> right? That's a different kind of function. But So you, you can also make decisions about where, you know, if your company's not that big, you got three employees or 10 employees, you may not have a separate HR department. They may report in through finance or through operations or something like that. There's no reason you can't consolidate this down a little bit. Does everybody kind of understand that? So any other functional areas we haven't covered? Because there's a big one that I think, well, maybe you already think it's covered, but I'm going to let you just ideate just a uh, Merchandising? Uh, merchandising? Merchandising, sure. We can put that in. I like that. We'll do Logistics. Ah. So it's possible under operations people consider logistics baked into there, but I would definitely, you know, I would probably put it under operations, but logistics, everybody here imports, right? Everybody here. So that wouldn't, that wouldn't go under operations? Yeah, absolutely could. Uh, but I, I think in a lot of cases, so I think, uh, oh, I took it out of, of this one. Uh, there are cases where your supply chain management is big enough that, you know, they may have their own little vertical. It doesn't have to be. And again, if you said, so this is kind of the way I start to break it down. Let's see, where can I? Okay, 
so as you start to think ahead about the positions to report to you, this is how you want to start synthesizing it down. And go, all, all these things are still necessary, by the way. All these functions have to happen. But how do you want them to report up? What makes sense? What buckets fit together? Well, clearly, logistics can go under operations, right? Any supply chain stuff can go there. Um, what other things would you think would go under uh, operations, as an example? Technical and operations, certainly. We're reading Mike's uh, past job descriptions. <laughs> um, any other operations uh, type things that you could throw in there? Production? Yeah, sure, of course. Uh, Chris has a factory floor, basically. You know? yeah, production, warehouse. Production, warehouse, thank you. Staging, they got stuff ready to go. Staging, right. Customer right. service. Yeah, so, and this is an important thing. So customer service is a, is a very interesting one, and I've noted it somewhere in something. Um, so now some guys will say, hey, listen, um, I want customer service, which is the service side of the customer touch, to be in operations. And I want the sales side, let's assume you have a call center at some point, I want the sales side to be over here. One's writing the check and one's cashing the check. Right, this is that checks and balances Mike was talking about with the firewall, right? And now other guys may say, hey, I don't ever want people have a customer touch point, so I'm just putting a fulfillment or a customer service department over here. But that would be very logical in our operations, right? Any other operations? Can I stop you right there? Please. So this, we've got this problem right now. And, and I'm trying to, uh, trying to change it. So um, uh, Roy says uh, we've got profit centers and cost centers. That's his brain, right? Uh, so it's Mike's job to come up with a bunch of airplane schemes on how we're going to sell more stuff next year. And it's Tim's job to you know, fulfill all that. And in our planning process, I put down all these things that we're going to do. We call them marginal SOs. How many more sales orders are we going to get from emails? How many more sales orders than the previous year are we going to get from promotions, you know, things like that. So I put all that together in our planning process, and then Tim is supposed to say, okay, well, Mike says he's going to add, you know, 20,000 sales orders next year, and I'm going to need this to, to do it. And, but, but meanwhile, we've got this whole conversation about culture going on, right? And we're trying to say the customer really, 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 really matters, where it's not just talk, it really matters. We had somebody last year that sold a million bucks. And we, we, Roy says, we are never going to recognize somebody for a million dollars in sales again because it focuses on sales and not on taking care of customers. We just thought it was fundamentally wrong that we would highlight the dollars and not the care and the, and the customer. So we're going to, there's this discussion, do we take customer service out of ops where they are today and move them over to the profit center and say that taking care of a customer is how we make profits. We have that very conversation going on. That's my point, right? This is A, it's dynamic, B, you can't just grab somebody's and fill in your blanks. You gotta think about who you are and what you're about. And that's our conversation at Hoa today. Well, you got a bunch of founders right here. What would you guys do with Mike's problem? I would put it in sales and marketing. But I, say, I think customer service, um, showing the customer you care is more important than Yeah. I hate coming up on the beyond. Just coming above and beyond. So what I want to do and then is not just change the org chart, not, not just grab the box and move it over. But I want to grab the box and, and smash the two boxes together and say, somebody called. This team is going to take care of them. If I buy something, they might have a problem. But I can, I'll have skill sets inside there of what they know. But, but it's one team. And I'm going to measure them on what they know and how well they take care of customers. argue, oh, this is all academic conversation, but the reality is it's real life. This is what happens. And regardless of how you do it, it just has to make sense to you. That's fundamentally my point. There, we've drawn out 50 different boxes here. 
none of them are right or none of them are wrong as long as it makes sense and as long as your business works. Now, if you, for example, said, well, I'm going to put customer service over here under finance, you're going to find that culturally there's something that doesn't quite work there, right? Now, again, there's exceptions. You, you might have a, a CFO who's got you know an operations bucket under them, and, and they are then responsible for it. But whatever makes sense to you, whatever serves your businesses. So my point on this, again, just to reiterate, is having fewer buckets for me to manage and having higher level executives who can take care of more stuff, that suits me personally. Now, if you say, I gotta have, have my hands in lots of stuff, then you wanna have a, a wider amount of people reporting to you. I think it's a mistake, to be honest. It certainly wasn't my case. Yeah, and Roy's got two. He's got me and Tim. Yeah. Gary had 10. Yeah, see, I don't like the 10 as much as I like the two for me. And I know Gary, he's a great guy, and you know, if he obviously succeeded, he exited 120 million bucks, more or less cash, he did all right with the 10, right? So no right and wrong. Um, okay, so I want to take, um, which department would you guys like to take down a, a level? Sales and marketing. Sales and marketing. So you care about how you generate money. <laughs> Uh, we're going to go about another short time. All right, so sales and marketing. Okay, give me some functions in sales and marketing. Well, so before, they, remember, I, this I is like a position. Add, yeah, I would like to add something. Um, I mean, there, there's people who are here right now with the war room. I really like how Ryan Dice goes about his organization. Oh, he has a certain content team, monetization team. Acquisition team. I think that's a very foundation. So I don't know if that applies here. And I'm sure you can move here, but I'm just saying. Let's, let's start with that as just an example. I think, again, there's no right and wrongs. So, uh, Marco, say it loud is content. Content. Acquisition. And it's, it's monetization. Acquisition. Uh, acquisition. Oh, no, it's content to acquisition. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm not doing them in order, but I can. Uh, content, acquisition. Acquisition. Monetization. Monetization. I'll report to this guy. Monetization. Okay, and so what's the logical extension of content? Copyright. Copyright, sure. So, you got to copy. They actually put their, their copywriter in the monetization side. Yeah. Oh, really? Yep. Okay. They actually use editors. So editor here, and of course writers, which I find to be a subtle difference between copywriter. And you said uh, copywriter here. Copywriter is not Yeah. So these are guys writing emails, writing the emails and these guys are writing blog posts. Those guys are getting traffic to send to the acquisition team. Or the okay. content is of the acquisition team. Well, the editor is, is the person who proofread everything. The well, the editor is a writer, too. It's much more like a reporter. Short, sweet, blog post more like a or get excited, get the vibe. But reporters don't have a game. Okay, so I. Well, I think that, yeah, the editor was the good the yeah. interesting use of that term, but content writing, think of content uh, marketing. Okay. Just put lots of blog posts out there, videos, whatever it is, content team responsible for green eyeballs. So this is writing lots of words in lots of places. Generating. Generating. Right. If they, how did, if they didn't write it, how did they do it? Think, think of it think of it as content is the blog post. Acquisition are getting the leads by utilizing the content. There you go. And then the monetization is once you get the lead, how to bring more get more money from that lead. Okay. It's pretty much the yeah, and I think, uh, again, all that's fine. I hate to dive in on a rat hole that I don't, I didn't. Re I remember it a little bit, but I didn't pay much attention, to be honest. Um, so, either way, we all understand, first you gotta attract them to the site, right? You gotta convert them on the site, and then you gotta maximize value, right? Get that, make that money, and uh, so forth. So, give me some other sales and marketing functions you guys can think of, whether or not they fit these buckets in your mind. Just any, any sales and marketing. Graphics, I heard. Traffic. Uh, oh, the traffic. Uh, maybe that's over here. 
which is CPC and others. You know, uh, you can what have about CPC, you can have social media, social, maybe over here. Social. What else you got? Account management. Account management. What kind of accounts? Well, channel okay. management. Channel too. management. Okay, where would you put those? Well, neither. It would be some. I would, okay. To me, it would be different. So channels. Yeah. You mean like you're talking like um, AdWords and Bing? No, more like like Amazon, Amazon EU, oh, eBay. Oh, okay. Or because we're not making sense. It's just not making sense. Okay. Yeah, we did. We're talking about. Okay. Do you understand that? Yeah, it was clear. Okay. And by the way. If you don't think your office is going to look like this, right, when you go this way, you're mistaken. It's going to be a million times. And by the way, I would always do it by hand first. I, I have the, the spreadsheet and I have the nice order chart. Don't bother wasting your time. Do it by hand first. Way, way faster. And you can X and O. And when you get close to the end, you can start doing it and make it look fancy. But just do it by hand. All right. so. Uh, give me a, give me another thing on marketing. We talked about content. Does anybody disagree that content is really an important function of marketing? And it's a big vertical, right? So this is probably somebody at some point is going to be a director of content. Is that how you do it, Mike? Or? They have it. Yeah, at HG. I don't have it yet. But they, okay. At HG. Director, we're going to say of content. All right. It was and 40 people. Oh, good. Not that many. Uh, well, give me the types of things that they did under that director of content. Um, well, there was, a, there was a scheduler, somebody to route stuff by priority. Then there was the individual teams. Okay, so you got a scheduler. Were they kind of a manager or, or yeah. just a facilitator to the director? How did that work? Uh, yeah, a little bit of a director of training, okay. and, uh, but a little more day to day. And then uh, what they would send, once they prioritized, they would send stuff to who? Uh, to the different teams. And each team then had um, data and image, because right, we were broken up by verticals. Right. Data, image, what else? And then on the far side of the teams, then there was uh, quality control. And that was still under content, yeah? Yep. yep. So QC is down here, kind of supervising everything. Now, Sean, does this make any sense to you in terms of Right, so you got your marketing guy, well, let's call him a VP for the sake of discussion. You got a director of content, right? Marketing still has a bunch of other stuff we haven't gotten to. And then you got this, I'm gonna call him a, a assistant or manager of, of content. He's handling kind of routing and prioritization. Then you've got your data team. Now you may have one person on the data team, you may have 20 people, but more or less they're data people. Is that right? Yeah, fair to say, Mike? Yep. Image people, right? Again, you may have one, you may have 40, depends on your needs. Um, and and for every, in, at this level, for every eight to 12, you would put in a you know a supervisor, manager structure, right? So if you have 40, you would actually break that down farther into kind of this idea where you have a manager and subordinates so that you have a clear structure. You can't have one guy with 40 reports. That for sure doesn't work. Anything else under this uh, content side? Uh, I think part of the, I think they had somebody that did pricing just because we could, you know, it's been weird the last, you know, five, ten years we haven't had much inflation. So we're, we're in a time of normal inflation. There are price increases coming through twice a year. And if you've got five million SKUs, that's a lot of work. Uh, can anybody else think of other things that are content that needs to happen? We got you know, again, our, our Wrangler data image price. You've got that research what you want to write. Okay, so sure. I would probably put research over here. And this may be the, the guys who help decide where we're going, right? You know, the, what, what new products are we going to do? What new directions are we going to take creatively, whatever? Go ahead, Jim. So, I don't know where this would fit in and if it would even fit in under this, but like the person who's like, Creating promo codes or whatever that kind of stuff is. It's, it's, I know it's kind of admin type thing, but well, that's usually in our case that was a part of a marketing program, and so that was a different channel. They were running promotions. Okay. So they were like a different that out. What we did, uh, the, the, some of that we did have under content was because they were working all these systems all the time. They had two people that were interfacing with dev. Right? I mean, it will be a tool. We've got to import a new kind of thing. Uh, we 
we need new fields to capture stuff that we want to have faster navigation, right? Chandeliers that have five lights versus seven in a new field for database. So they had uh, an interface down there where these guys can, can do that. So you may have a promos department, for example. And, and by the way, so somebody asked, what is merchandising, right? Uh, that's a fair question. And it depends on who you ask, honestly. Uh, so, a lot of times people think of marketing and merchandising as the same thing. Uh, in, in traditional settings, merchandising is essentially kind of the new product development or the uh, curation of products, essentially making the catalog, managing whatever supply chain it is, whether it's manufacturing or whether it is drop shipping, doesn't matter, merchandising happens, handles it all the way up, deal making, all of that stuff, negotiating, and then they hand it off. As a as a new product, uh, you know, his new product department, you know, may also be thought of the a merchandise department in some sort. And so, so and then merchandising hands the ball off with here's your new items marketing. Uh, here's what we think you should be able to, you know, do with this. And then marketing makes a plan to meet their goal of sales. And then marketing makes their plan up, and then they can get the sales or you know traffic or whoever. So does that help? People understand kind of merchandising definition. It's it doesn't really matter what you call it. Some people call it you know merchandising, and other people don't. Uh, so you got content because you got to generate stuff. You got promos because you got to manage lots of things. And under promos, if you get really big, you may have channel management there as well. Um, and part of your mission, looking into the future, is to go. Is it you know in theory, is it possible I need an Amazon promo person at all times? on Amazon, it's possible. They're not easy to deal with, right? Uh, on Shopify, probably not a full-time person. Much, much easier to deal with. And actually, some less functionality. But so you, you might have some channel management there and say, I'm going to do, um, you know, e-commerce and um, marketing channels in general. And then you might have an Amazon guy. And then you might have a big box guy or whatever. So. You might have promos and traffic. Any other top line marketing things you guys can think of? Brandy. Right, I'm not there. You know, if Marcos is trying to build this thing big, he's going to want some sort of either a group of brands or a single corporate brand. Do you think branding around content? It can, it, it can be thought of as content has to deliver on the brand promise. Where it's managed. The content, you know, the so SEO, but build your brand, build your message, build your brand. Yeah, but what is the brand? What is the message? Somebody's got to set that, and somebody has to keep the, you know, raise that flag and hold it high, so the content knows what they're doing. In my opinion, that's, you know, I could imagine different, but yeah, that's a very common philosophical. Hey, somebody sets the the brand. Yeah. And by the way, this probably doesn't have 25 people in it, right? But they set the agenda, whatever that happens to be, and then they kick that throughout the rest of the organization. So we're, we're out of time on this stuff, but does everybody understand that it's, a, it's kind of a, a weird process and there's no wrong answer, but I'll tell you the only way you'll get through it, and I, I will have a tool for you in you know, three to four weeks, we'll take you through this and help you kind of think it out, but you just have to start making these things, and, and at some point you go, hey, wait a minute, this makes sense to me, and you'll start refining it further and further and follow that. Uh, in the spreadsheet, I'm sure. So, yeah, it's all about review and refinement and so forth. When you follow the process, you'll be able to finally squeeze the answer out. And it just takes time and energy. And again, there's no wrong answer, right? As long as you understand it. And again, fundamentally, your mission is to put in titles, you build around functions, positions, not individuals, right? Even though Albert's awesome, if Albert leaves, how will they replace Albert? Right? I'm not saying anything wrong about that, by the way. You need that you know, brand domain expert, and you never want to lose that talent, by the way. But you know, I'm not sure what the, the, the transition plan is if Albert goes away, voluntarily or involuntarily. Yeah. Right? I mean, if you get hit by a bus, what do you do? Right? That's, a, that's a tough choice for my kid. So the more you can kind of control that from the beginning and not you know, have uh, wild cards, I think it's a good thing. So the last point or two, and then Mike, you got it. We're gonna take a, uh, a 10 and then, then we're gonna roll this out. Okay. So.
All right, we've already talked about this. Uh, one of Mike's and uh, therefore my favorite sayings, no score, no game. If you don't measure it and you don't manage it, nobody cares, right? Cool, sir. Yeah. Sit. Um, oops, I missed uh, one little point back there. Um, all right, oh, so this is more or less just reviewing what we just went through. You start at the top, you build your functions, uh, you carry on, and you say to yourself, all right, now that I kind of know functionally what I need, uh, I've got to take a look at the positions and how do I define those and understanding hierarchy matters. I can't tell you, Mike said it so well, titles are a currency. Even if they're not to you, they are in the real world. And you should treat them as such. And the worst mistake you can make, and I, I think Mike would agree with this, in fact, I think we've had conversations where we try to avoid this problem. If you bring in somebody and they're like, hey, I want to come on, I want to jump on board, but I gotta be a VP. I gotta be a VP, man. This is just the way I gotta be a VP or some level that really doesn't make sense. And you acquiesce, you create a cultural problem like you cannot believe. Because everybody else is going, that guy is not a VP, right? And then that guy walks around going, hey, I'm a VP, you know, you better listen to me. Right? And he just creates extraordinary problems. That's a real life example. Yeah, if you do that, then you have two choices. That you, and you need to make the choice in the next five minutes. Either immediately fire them or quit. Because <laughs> <laughs> there is no other outcome that works. Yeah. <laughs> and assuming you're not going to quit, you'll have one choice. Um, so position development, title matter, and do not let title inflation run away with you. Don't acquiesce on something just because it sounds like the easy thing to do. We can always talk about this later. We'll have our little Facebook group, but titles are important. Of course, you review and refine, and then at some point you're going to go, I'm launching this baby. This is, this is what our future looks like, everybody. You're going to put in your names on that chart of the people who are there. You're going to put yourself in many, many boxes, and and they'll understand, yeah? Yeah, they're really running logistics and running this and that. Well, they need a lot of help. You guys only got so many hours, right? It's not so much that you get paid for every slot on there, because you still have hundred hours. It's just that you get a lot of work. We used to say something like, oh, I only got five jobs now. That's pretty easy. So, everybody, yeah, everybody has three jobs. Yeah. That was, and I said it all the time. Somebody came in and said, well, I got to do this. I said, hey, everybody's got three jobs. Yeah, this isn't my job. Yeah, it is, because everybody's got three. <laughs> yeah. And when you have that, uh, that thing, it makes it easier to rationalize. All right. Here's your very important homework. Your takeaway from the event should involve something like this. Uh, and again, I'm going to send you the slides. You'll have access to everything. Don't worry. Uh, but you're going to go on a journey to find your why. Can I get anybody to affirmatively commit that they'll take a step to try to find your why? Will you guys make that commitment to yourself anyway? And hold yourselves accountable. I hope that when you guys see each other at events and so on, yes, hey, are you making progress? I'm struggling with this. Can you help me? How have you thought about that? Take this step. Nothing. So you guys know, for those who do know me more, I I rarely will speak in terms of you know hyperbole to the, the maximum unless I'm joking around, right? So I'm not going to say, oh, if you sprinkle this pixie dust, your sales are going to go by a million percent, right? But I will tell you, the single biggest thing you can do to have a successful business and a happy life is to find your wife. And if those aren't enough of an incentive for you, I don't know what to tell All right, so next is you're going to define your strategic objective that achieves your why. And that is quantifying the sales. That's quantifying how many employees. Or, you know, just paint your vision big. Don't worry about being right. Just understand it and start to articulate it. That's strategic objective. I'll help you with some stuff on that later. Develop your company story. Um, if you guys should understand that intellectual origin story. Hey, here's how we started out, here's why we're cool, and here's what we hope to achieve. Right? Not that hard. You're going to develop key indicators. We talked about that a lot in the past uh, about systems and so on. Hey, this tells us if we're making progress or we're going backwards. Just, and by the way, don't make a hundred of them. Find three to five. That could be three to five in each department. Don't make a hundred and you're like, ah, I don't think they'll work together. You'll go nowhere. So key development indicator. Develop your org chart. And then after you have an org chart, you're going to make a systems chart that is very similar to an org chart. And essentially, it is almost like a flow chart for how all the systems fit together. So I showed you an inventory thing, right? So 
we've got inventory, we bring it through the system, and on the other end, it goes to purchase it, right? And then that has a system to follow. And everything should have you know, a flow to it, a flow chart. That's your homework. Please. So, so I'm sorry, Steve. No, no. Sorry. So, uh, did, you, did you cover KPIs on Thursday when I wasn't here? Uh, not on the high level. Or is that all they see? Inventory, that is what the... Uh, that is the uh, measurement part. So just so, so raise your hand a little bit, a lot, or all the way up. If you have uh, on your understanding of what KPIs are or your use. Um, these these things are huge with Roy. Roy is uh, a what I call a, a ratio mathematician. He does a ton of math. But he doesn't believe it until he can convert the math to a ratio that tells him something about what's going on. And I'll, I'll give you a couple as examples. Um, we have one we call OTR, Organic Traffic Ratio. How much of our traffic, and in, in, in his case, he looks at, at just at Google straight up. How much Google Organic did I get, and how much Google Pay did I get? And he tracks it to a tenth of a percent every day. Okay. This is a meter. Yes. So he goes every day. Yes. Yeah. Well, Roy's an interesting cat. Okay. But he puts it. But then this is a meter that he puts on his business. Uh, he tracks it every day. He really worries about it every week. Okay. So every, that, every Monday morning. That, that's the, okay. When he uh, tries to understand what's going on, he looks at the. What kind of average? Seven days, ten days, five days, fourteen days average to see the trend? Uh, well, we, he's looking at it every seven, every, every Monday. Okay. So, so we're at fifty-five point four last week. I'm almost positive of that number. Okay, it's that important of a number. So fifty-five percent of our Google traffic came in organically. Forty-six point six percent, I guess, came in paid. That's of our Google traffic. And there's all sorts of stuff that's left out, right? Direct traffic, social, whatever. Um, but that is, for Roy, I'm not telling you you need to do this, but for Roy, that's a really important number because it keeps him from getting his PPC spend out of whack, right? It's too easy to kind of start spending money there. So then it does shift, right? It bobbles, it moves. It went down to uh, 52 one day. It doesn't sound like a big problem, right? A couple, three points, what's the big deal? Well, it turns out it's a bunch of dough, right? Because now we're paying more our cost of uh, cost to convert an order, another number we use, shifted. That got to be a problem. He started digging into it because it was different enough, and he's done this long enough that it wasn't a bubble to him. It was a real. It was like you know, hitting the curb in a car. It was a really big deal. And he dug in and dug in, and he found a problem in the business. And he said, "Damn it, we got to fix this." Okay, but this was a meter on his business that he could understand, and, and he started tracking. Another one that he tracks is AOV. And again, I would expect in our case, AOV to bounce around a ton because we've got uh, trade orders. And it does, so he strips out. Everything over 5,000 bucks comes out. He, he takes that out. All of our Amazon business comes out because it's way lower AOV. We're usually at 130, Amazon's at 49, um, right? So, so he watches just this sort of center cut of, of orders. And, and he saw it uh, drop down when we went from um, a regular website to a responsive uh, website for mobile, okay? And it dropped, and the reason was, when we went to mobile, we dropped out uh, families, uh, I, I would say family, that is, you can buy a switch plate that goes over a light switch, right? There's just the one, but you can also buy a double and a triple and a quadruple, right? So items and family wasn't in the responsive website, it was too hard to put it in there. And then recommended products wasn't in there. Again, it was too hard to put in, so we took those out. Turns out, uh, those two items combined are $4 um, AOV on a global basis. So even though they, they were in desktop still, because they weren't in mobile, it cost us 4 bucks on our AOV. We went from 130 to 128 120, 126 okay? But he knew it. <laughs> he, he found it because he had the meters on the business. I like to meet him. But yeah. <laughs> Interesting cat. Well, yeah. This is why I'm 58 years old, and I'm learning so much, right? And he's pushing me, you know. But but that, I just I give you that to think about, right? Look at your business, and then the first time you do it, you're gonna get it wrong, okay? So that's okay. 
find a new meter, put it in another part of the business and watch it for a while, and then put a couple of more in, and he now sort of has this dashboard in his head of what's going on. But it's because he calculates these numbers, and like I said, in some cases he'll do a center cut. He'll throw out the high and the low and deal with the, the many in the middle, you know, to get a better sense of what's going on. But, you know, all of a sudden he'll come in just in a crappy, crappy mood, you know? And, you know, this will be the problem. And I'm, I didn't even see it, but he did. Does he use any kind of VI software to compute his data or to read it easily or in just a full he's spreadsheet? Got, he's got, a, yeah, he's got a, an Excel spreadsheet and he has to get his own hands dirty with it. Yeah, yeah. So I think, uh, obviously, key indicators are vital, right? And you guys have to define those for yourselves. Um, I'm a big fan of the dashboard. We talked about this in uh, detail about you know, the inventory. But that rolls all the way up top and bottom. The dashboards for every every department on that org chart, they should have their metrics, they should have their dashboard. And the assembly of that and so forth can take a little time. But that's why metrics matter. So, Mike, you're going to be coming up. Uh, but I'd like to. I'd like to give you 10 minutes. You guys need 10 minutes or should we just push on through? Because we're going to do Mike for about 40 minutes and then we'll leave. 10 minutes, yeah, no problem. So we'll take a 10, but uh, let me just leave you with what? Oh, I'm going to leave you with a wrap up message according to the slide. All right. I'll see you all. Okay, so we're obviously the classroom time is coming up uh, to the end here. But you guys know, for everyone who knows me, you just call me. You find me on Messenger. If you need me, I'm there, right? Uh, I believe in entrepreneurs, right? Actually, one of my favorite things in the world are entrepreneurs, right? The, the idea, uh, my philosophy is entrepreneurs solve problems. Entrepreneurs don't make problems. We solve problems, right? And, and I like to help the guys that, you know, really have that same vision and passion. And we've all talked about the idea that, you know, you've got to find your tribe and you've got to hang out with the folks like you. Well, I know my tribe. They're typically entrepreneurs, right? I do not go to whatever neighborhood association meeting to talk about how my, my beach is coming in at the garden or you know the latest sports tragedy and you know what I, none of that matters to me. That's my brain is not wired that way. But I love to talk about you know crazy marketing analytics and, and all kinds of other crazy stuff. And so if you're like me, then you need to make sure that you know your tribe. And uh, yeah, so I'm always there for you. And it doesn't matter where, when or under any context. You don't have to come to any mastermind meeting, you don't have to do anything, just call me. I'm always there. Um, and you already know what I believe. I've talked about much of about uh, but I can tell you know each of you you can do it. We'll talk at dinner and, and sign off tonight. But all of this process, I, if it feels overwhelming to you, does anybody feel overwhelmed a little bit at the moment? And like holy crap, this is a lot of a lot of stuff, right? It's okay. You should feel like that. In fact, if you did, I don't feel like I would have done my job. Uh, honestly, if you came away and go, I didn't really learn much. This is kind of a little well, shit here, you know. Are you okay, okay? Right? But if if you are feeling overwhelmed, that's normal, and you give yourself time to process. So, Michael, uh, why don't we switch up? You take your ten minutes, everybody, and that means uh, four twenty right here. You're in charge of letting me know what I've got there. No problem. All right. All right. Why are you confusing me on that damn thing? I don't express it. My little remote control. My dice is arguing to you. My back is still clear. Because it's the perfect time because they all yeah, feed back to each other. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. the content, the yeah. ads are converting. Yeah, the yeah. content is like, so the ads, so the competition is back to the content <laughs> team. It's like, what the hell? If the monetization team is going to lose out their monthly number or whatever they're trying to hit, all Ryan has to do is go to the monetization team and see what's going on. Whereas that, they'll go back to the acquisition team. They're out getting shitty leads. Yeah, right. Why are you getting shitty leads? Because the content sucks. For the content team, you get the go. I love that. That it makes sense to me because I was trying to plug it into the way Steve's laying this out. I'm like, yeah, it's a process, not just a hard chart. Yeah, well, yeah. So yeah. Not, yeah. Not, 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 not. Are you got to get to do like some production? Right. Uh, I got a warrant. We did like sit down with Ryan. I think he pitched it at the. Uh, or he didn't no, I, I, I got it from HQ. Oh, okay, it's been proven there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, it's a, he sent it as a link to an email. Yeah, no, it's. I've been working for him. 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 I've
the check line for a lot of you can see it's not going to like a cow turn or stuff. Well, so he was putting that in. Yeah, six person. There's what everything was. So yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, that day. Where acquisition is to see its green and do business. And monetization was all about making the profitable down. But see, the 